Success of any crop improvement program depends upon the presence of sufficient genetic variability. Unfortunately, like other crops, pulses also have a very narrow genetic base. Further, the pulse production worldwide is adversely affected by several biotic and abiotic stresses. Not only this, due to climate change, new insect pests and diseases are emerging as major threat affecting the pulse production and productivity globally. Sources of resistance for these stresses, they are not available in the cultivated gene pool. To achieve pulse efficiency, the major objective of pulse improvement programs is to develop the high yielding varieties uh, which are climate resilient, having a broad genetic base and with a high level of resistance and tolerance to key biotic and abiotic stresses, which in turn depends upon the exploitation and utilization of new and diverse sources of variations. And to achieve these objectives, plant genetic resources, they play a vital role and they have been conserved in different gene banks globally and provide the basic raw material as they carry the many useful genes and they exhibit enormous natural genetic variations. In ICRESAT, we are working for the genetic improvement of two major pulses, which is chickpea and uh, pigeon pea. And in our RS Paroda gene bank and ICRESAT, we have conserved over 34,000 germplasm accessions of chickpea and pigeon pea, which mainly consist of the elite breeding lines, uh, modern and absolute varieties, uh, land races, and the wild relatives. And these have been collected from 99 countries. In spite of having such a large collection, only a few germplasm accessions have been utilized for chickpea and pigeon pea improvement. A reason for this low utilization is the poor adaptation of most of these germplasm accessions, poor agronomic performance, uh, incompatibility barriers between the cultivated and the wild species, and linkage track. Uh, when we want to involve such germplasm accessions in the breeding program, it takes comparatively more efforts and time to generate the breeding material. Due to these reasons, breeders mostly use their working collection, which mostly consists of the elite breeding lines. And while using this working collection, it results in the recirculation of the same genotype and hence the narrow genetic base of the released cultivars. And due to these reasons, there lies a huge gap between the germplasm conserved in the gene banks and that of utilized in the breeding program. And the potential value of plant genetic resources is not channeled back into the societal benefit. And to bridge this gap, pre-breeding plays an important role and it provides a unique opportunity through the introgression of useful genes from the unadapted germplasm such as uh, the exotic land races and wild species uh, into the genetic background which is readily used by the breeders to develop the new cultivars. Focused and systematic pre-breeding efforts have been initiated in ICRESAT for the improvement of chickpea and pigeon pea, wherein we are using the promising land races, uh, wild species uh, as donors, and the popular cultivars of chickpea and pigeon pea as recipient. And we are focusing on developing the new gene pool, having high frequency of useful traits in good agronomic background, wider adaptability, and broad genetic base. These pre-breeding activities are not that simple and straightforward as they look like, but have both technical and financial challenges. Due to the involvement of incompatible and unadapted germplasm, these pre-breeding activities become more time consuming and resource demanding. Uh, various challenges facing pre-breeding are due to the lack of characterization and evaluation data, especially for the novel traits in wild species, uh, which hinders the selection of uh, promising donors uh, for use in the breeding programs. Uh, next is due to the poor knowledge of crossability relationship between the cultivated species and the wild species. Another major problem is the linkage track, which is commonly associated with the utilization of wild species in the breeding program. Another major challenge is due to the inadequate funding to carry out these activities. Here I must emphasize that assured, unrestricted and long-term funding is needed to have the greater impact of pre-breeding in achieving the pulse efficiency. I strongly believe that in order to bring pulse revolution, especially in the era of climate change, there is an urgent need for active collaboration with all stakeholders to strengthen the pre-breeding program, which will ensure the continuous supply of new and diverse genetic variability into the pulse improvement program.